My name is Daniel, and today we're going to take a look at how to assemble the Pico Help 2. So settle in, grab a drink, and lean back, and I hope you enjoy. This first step is optional, since I recommend that you have the PCB assembled by the manufacturer of your choice. Or still, it gives some nice footage. I still had some RP2350 board lying around that I could put the parts off of. Now it's time for the actual assembly and picking and placing the parts. This stop motion montage shows an hour's worth of work. Now that all components have been placed, it's time for the heating plate. The boiling went well and there were only two minor short circuits, nothing a little bit of solder wick can't handle. Now that the main board has been assembled, let's start with the actual assembly of the Pico Help. Well, the first step is to install the main board into the case. The main board is secured with two 3mm 1.m6 screws and the shim placed under the screws. Once you have popped the analog stick into place, proceed to connect the flex cable. Solder two wires to each shoulder button PCB, then put the PCBs into their compartments. The final PCBs will have a silk screen marking showing how to connect the pads to the main board. Uh, these are missing here. Now solder the wires to the main board. Okay, let's speed things a little up here. Make sure to keep the wires as short as possible and take care that they don't get in the way of the buttons or the metal rods. You need to cut off the mounting brackets on the speaker and the connector as well. Then push the speaker into place. We're going to solder the speaker directly to the main board. Next is the battery. Instead of taping it directly to the back shell, I recommend wrapping it in paper. This way, if you need to remove it later, you can simply tear the paper off without risking any damage to the battery. Take care not to touch any components with the wires when doing the solder work, otherwise bad things might happen. Now is a good time to check if the system is working. Now that the electrical components are in place, it's time to assemble the mechanical parts. And that's the buttons. Start by pressing the button bearing into place. Place the upper shell onto flat surface so it won't bend under the applied force. Secure the button bearing using two 4mm M1.6 screws. Do not use any longer screws as these may dent the outer part of the shell. Before we proceed, there's one thing you need to be aware of. There are different types of SNES buttons available online. Some have rounded pins, while others have more rectangular ones. Those with the rectangular pins tend to be slightly larger in diameter. We're using the smaller ones here, which also seem to be higher in build quality as far as I can tell. We'll need buttons that have a diameter of approximately 10.2 millimeters. The pins are too long to fit inside the button bearing. It wasn't possible to make the pockets any longer without compromising stability, so we need to adapt the buttons. Use some sandpaper to grind off a few millimeters off the pins. If the buttons won't fit into the bearing or easily get stuck, you need to grind off some material off the button holes. Be careful here not to scratch the aluminum shell and be easy on the bearing. You will usually only need to remove a very small amount of material. Some of the buttons are poorly shaped. If this happens, you'll need to give them a soft touch with the sandpaper. If 
you need to cut the silicone rubber contacts for the buttons from the PS4's ABXY rubber pad. They don't have to be super accurate, but they should resemble discs. Also, cut off the edges. The rubber contacts for the shoulder buttons are made from the PS4's D-pad. They need to be pretty small, that'll give the shoulder buttons nice and firm tactile feedback. Since this comes down to personal preference, you might want to experiment a little bit until you get the right shape. Finally, insert the missing buttons into the top shell. Connect the LC display to the main board. Although there are screw holes in the top shell intended for securing the LCD, it is currently not advised to use these. That is because the LCD is already firmly in place between the battery and the frame. Place the D-pad rubber pad on the main board, then get a grip on the button shell with your index finger and uh, <laughs> your pinky to push down the shoulder buttons. This is supposed to keep the shoulder buttons from falling out of the case. Hold the top part at an angle, then let the LCD gently fall into the top shell. Afterwards, slide the shoulder buttons and the shoulder PCB into the top case. Finally, gently push the case together while applying only a little force. Last thing to do is to insert and fasten the screws. And that's it! You've finished assembling the Pico Hell 2. If you've made it this far, then thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I've sparked your interest in building your own Pico Hell 2. See you next time, bye bye!